I'll go. Not for the fun of the sun, though there may be plenty. This time destinies are at stake, and it's ours for the taking. Some may say, who is this God who uses ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things? What seemed big is now little. Don't get it twisted, beloved. It's not about us. us. It's about him. It's about them. You see, somewhere in the world, there's a broken heart that's still beating. A child without medical health care with a disease that needs healing. A drug addict, an alcoholic. A girl out on the streets with the men all up on it. Trying to fill a void they've been chasing since they were boys. Spellbound. And now, God says, go. Break the cycle, take a Bible, and read it so they may hear it, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You don't have to be the master of the Bible, just know, know the, the master. master of the Bible, and it will show that He is the vine, and we are the branches. And he that abideth in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without him, we can do nothing.
Why is the church has the perception that it is stagnant and not moving? Most of that has to deal with the first world country churches like uh, North America, Europe. But the church is not stagnant in the third world countries. They're growing very rapidly. And I believe that the reason why in the first world countries uh, things are stagnant concerning soul winning, the perception is that it has to do with that when people are poor, they're willing to accept anything, and people who are wealthy, well, they don't have the same needs, therefore they're not going to respond. The reality is all people have needs. Christ came to save all, not just the poor and not the rich. Poor people have challenges just like rich people do. It's just that the challenges are different. We all have problems, we all have temptations, we all have uh, challenges. However, in the face of adversity, and poverty, etc., people are willing to turn to the Lord. No, what happens is this. Our forefathers, and I'm speaking about our grandparents in North America, when they became converted, they really believed that they needed to go out to the world and share the message of salvation. And they also understood that having a good handle on Bible knowledge was necessary. And they used what we call the antiquated system of evangelism. Our grandparents had success in that they were able to teach the indigenous how to use the same techniques that Jesus used. In these other countries, what they learned from the missionaries they're still using. So it's still working in all of these countries that they have rich and poor, but it's not working in America simply because it's not being used. If you go to other third world countries, the lay people are out giving Bible studies. They go to work, but then they are visiting neighbors and they're sharing the gospel. They'll take trips to go to a long place, walk 10 miles, 20 miles to go and give a Bible study. In America, that same motivation, that same conviction that the world needs to be reached has kind of diminished. And the result is that there are not many lay people in our churches that are going out. In the other countries, a pastor may have 18 churches, 20 churches, and the churches are growing. In North America, a church wants a single pastor to every church. So what happens then is that it shifts from the people doing the work of the Lord and consequently benefiting from sharing. Uh, they become so specialized that it's not my gift. What is your gift? If you have a misconception, you are led to a wrong conclusion. There are people who actually believe that their time is being paid so that the pastor can work. Like pastors hired gun for them. It's interesting, you can always make time for whatever you want to make time for. So if our people would understand that Jesus wants them to be his representatives and they would shirk their fears and say, Lord, I believe that you want me to do it, here I am. God can then enable those individuals to become very effective and so on. God could have done the work of saving souls without our aid. Is that a true statement? Of course, God can do it. But it continued. In order for us to develop a character like Christ, we must be involved in the salvation of others. So in order to develop a Christ-like character, we may, no, we must be involved 
in the salvation for others. Reaching people where they are means that you love people irrespective of where they are. If they have a need, if they sense a need, they want to be able to be brought up from where they are. They want to be left where they are. He healed people, helped people, but he did not stop there. God has ordained several ingredients for our spiritual development. You have to be converted, and then upon conversion, you get a burden to share with others, so you share. But then you have to know what to share, so you become better acquainted with Christ through His Word. And so that zeal of sharing increases. But if they don't understand that, they'll never get beyond just maybe talking to somebody casually about being religious. Jesus put it this way, go and compel them to come in. That means that there's a part that you have to play in helping that person make the decision. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, and then shall the end come. In order for the end to come, the gospel must be preached. You can't get around that. That's what he said. That's what he meant. And that's what the disciples understood. In a practical sense then, Paul writes and he says that those who hear the word of God shall be saved. But how shall they be saved except someone goes to preach to them? And how shall they preach except there be somebody that's sent preaching the word of God? I see lives change all the time. I see crooks becoming honest. I see drug addicts becoming sober. I see wife beaters becoming loving husbands. I see alcoholics becoming sober. I see all sorts of people change. I see rich becoming humble. I see the educated becoming teachable. I see all of those things through the preaching of the word. Some people think that it was only the apostles that did the preaching. But if you read it in the book of Acts chapter eight, it says that those that were scattered went everywhere preaching the word verse 1. But then if you read verse 4, it says they were all scattered except the apostles. So you have to ask the question, who was doing the preaching that was scattered if it weren't the apostles? Members. If our people could see the import of the power that the Word of God has when preached with conviction, whether it be in a person one-to-one, -one, whether it be in a group setting, whether it be preaching to an audience, if the Word of God was shared with conviction, then we would see more conversions.
maka adu langit nga mahimaya um ginadam ko nga didto akong makita si Kristo Thank you. 
Thank you.